All right, welcome back, Brush Monkeys. This is the um, final part of the Slaness side of the Wrath and Rapture uh, box set, the New Realm of Chaos box set, and we are going to be doing the Infernal and Rapturous. Uh, she is a special character for Slaness. She's got some uh, guys she made a harp out of. Uh, basically gave him a blood eagle and made a harp out of it. It's kind of gross, um, but it should be fun to paint. Um, I'm going to do a couple of little different things. With this one, I'm going to use a mix of different techniques. Um, I think for this guy's skin, I'm going to be using um, the contrast Gulliman flesh here, but I'm going to uh, highlight it with some uh, Eldar flesh to make him a little paler. Um, and with her, because she's essentially a demoness, or demonette, um, I can do some pretty wild colors with her, but I think with her I'm going to use the uh, contrast I end in yellow. Um, based on how my test stick came out here, I think that's going to look pretty good on her skin, and I think that yellow is going to contrast nicely with the purple of her gown. Um, I'm also using the uh, Green Stuff World True Blood on the harp strings here, where they're coming out of his back. I'm going to highlight paint those with this so it'll be a chance to test that out too um, and yeah it should be a, should be a fun little paint job here so uh, like I said this is going to be the last section of the realm of chaos the last last part of the Slaness side of the Ra realm of chaos wrath and rapture box set um, after this we'll move on to the corn side and uh, start in on some uh, blood letters probably but uh, yeah, this would be interesting. Oh, um, one more note, because there's a lot of overspray on the base here, but the base is really kind of small, I'm going to be using this P3 Battlefield Brown uh, to re-base coat the base once all this is done. And then the, the actual basing is going to be similar to the others, but a little bit different. Uh, I'm gonna stick with the Agrellan Earth. I'm not gonna use the Agrellan Badlands because there's not enough room really on the base. And then I'll just have little, a little patch or two of the uh, Lesker and undergrowth, and maybe, maybe one little tuft of flowers back here. Um, but yeah, that's. Otherwise, it, it's going to match the rest of the army, obviously, and it's going to look pretty, pretty spiff. Hopefully, by the time I get done with it. So I'm going to pause now and get the base coats done on this girl, and then we'll come back and uh, take a look at what I got. All right. All right. See you soon. All right, we're back, and as you can see, I've got her all base coated up. The it looks like some of the shade washing has already been done, just because the contrast paint on the on her skin and the contrast paint on his uh, kind of is base and shade coats all at once. If you saw my video on on the uh, contrast paints a few months ago, um, that's kind of how that works. So. And that's kind of why I wanted to try it on here to see how that works alongside the more traditional paint techniques of the base coat, shade wash, and highlight. And it's looking pretty good so far. Um, I put the blood on the strings already. I'll probably put uh, once the once the contrast paints dry and everything, and I go to highlight it. I'll probably put another coat of blood on the strings. Um, but yeah, so so far she's looking pretty good. I think I'm going to go ahead and and uh, put the shade washes on the rest of it and uh, as you can see I got the base uh, rebased and everything so that's good to go so yeah I'm gonna go ahead and put the shade washes on it and then uh, we'll come back and uh, take another look all right see you soon all right so the shade washing didn't take too long <laughs> it was uh, like I said the flesh was mostly uh, kind of shade wash anyway by virtue of being part of the the um, texture paints or the texture paints the contrast paints and um, the uh, so really all that needed to be done was I put a purple wash on the gown here and there's a couple of places and you know there we go smooth that out a little bit And I just kind of smooth that transition between the darker purple and the lighter purple and emphasize the uh, folds a little bit. Put a little purple wash on the demon flesh 
and the hair to kind of blend all that out. And then uh, I used Reichland Flush Shade up here on the gold of the harp. And uh, that's really about it. I mean, the rest of it is, uh, the rest of it's pretty kind of self-explanatory. I don't need a shade in, there's no shade wash needed on the base because it's going to get the texture paint. Um, the skin, like I said, is kind of part and parcel of the contrast paint. But yeah, she's looking pretty good. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and take a break and let the shade wash dry. And then uh, when I come back, uh, when I come back, I'll do the highlights and then I'll show you what that looks like and all that stuff. And it's going to be pretty straightforward. Um, Eldar Flesh for his skin. Um, kind of thinking her skin might just be left the way it is. But I'll, I'll do the eyes. And then uh, Golden Griffin for the harp. And maybe a little more blood on the strings. Uh, might do a little bit of Caraberg Crimson on his back and the arms where the strings are coming out of. Just to make that look a little bloody and a little, uh, depending on how it highlights the Slanesh symbol on his back here, I'll do uh, a little bit of Caraberg Crimson around that just to bring it out. And then, uh, yeah. Surprisingly enough for such an ornate looking figure it actually paints up pretty quick and goes by pretty easily um, So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and and take a break and let the shade washes dry and then we'll come back and uh, Detail her up. All right. See you soon All right, so I'm back and um, I put the highlights on you can see I've highlighted the gold. I've also put um, I've used uh, the Tamiya clear red on all the gemstones dry brush his flesh I used the green stuff world true blood on the strings and the um, etched in symbol on his back um, I don't know if you can get that close enough so you can see it yeah these cameras suck sorry <laughs> but the uh, the symbol on his back is like etched into his skin and so I painted it up with the true blood, same as I did the strings that are coming out. And I put a little bit of blood along the edges of his arms and back where the strings are coming out. And uh, I got to say that the Tamiya, or excuse me, the Green Stuff World True Blood effect paint is, um, it's brighter than the uh, Citadel Blood for the Blood God. It's also a little thinner. So it... It flowed nicely into the symbol, but it also took a couple of a couple of coats, and there's still some places that could use some little bit of work. It doesn't go on as thickly as the uh, Blood for the Blood God, and so it's a little easier to control in fine spaces like this. But at the same time, to get a really good, um, really good fresh blood look to it, it takes a couple of coats and uh, you see up here on some of the strings it needs to be layered on there a little thicker too but uh, overall came out looking really good I'm really kind of pleased with it um, so she's basically done now um, that's there really wasn't a whole lot to this figure it, it goes together pretty fast um, Uh, I'm going to do the base now. I'm going to go ahead and put that uh, texture paint on the base. And then uh, we'll come back when, when she's finished. Um, like I said, it's, it certainly doesn't take as long to do as a full unit um, takes to do. And like Some of those larger pieces or the, the full unit of demonettes, I can see, took quite a bit longer. Um, this one doesn't need to take that long because it's a single figure and it's it's just one figure and it's pretty small so sometimes people are kind of surprised when it only takes a couple hours to do a single figure they're really it's really not necessary to spend a whole shitload of time on these I mean this is a good tabletop standard and I'm done in probably three or four hours so it didn't really take a whole lot of time at all 
So like I said, I'm going to finish putting the texture paint on the base and then I'm going to come back and we'll uh, uh, finish up the base with the tufts and rocks and that kind of thing. Alright, so see you in a bit. Alright, so I'm back and I've got the, um, the base, the basing textures put on. Uh, that one's not quite, well, yeah, it's kind of dry. Um, I wanted to take a moment and show you real quick that uh, I didn't put the glue down on the base before I textured it like I normally do. So you could see, um, let me see if I can position the camera a little better here. Uh, there we go, sorry about that. So if you take a look, you can see where it's, there's some cracking right along there. And there's a little bit of cracking right here. But for the most part, it's the base is pretty smooth. It didn't crack a whole lot. And that's, so that kind of shows you the difference between when you put the glue down like I did on the others and when you don't put it down like I did on this one, the difference that comes out. Um, another quick thing I wanted to show you is, see how glossy the blood effects and the gemstones and everything are? And especially on that symbol on his back. Um, when we go to matte seal it with the army painter and a shine, that's going to knock that gloss right off of there. And the golds aren't going to be as vibrant and all that kind of thing as well. So anytime you've got something that you want to stay shiny like that, get yourself some gloss varnish. This is just a little bit of leftover gloss varnish that I had. And um, get yourself some of that and that will help you to... Uh, it won't won't protect the gloss. I mean, obviously, if you put the anti shine on there, it's going to knock the gloss off. But the gloss varnish, you can then go back over it with that, and that'll bring the shine back to those places that you want to be glossy. Um, so that helps a little bit. This is all textured up and ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and put the uh, shade wash on the base now, and then we'll take another break and uh, come back. Uh, I'm going to. I'm going to shade wash the base, I'm going to take a break, and uh, then I'm going to dry brush the base. And when I come back, you'll, I'll, uh, you'll see what, what I mean. Um, let's see, shade wash, dry brush, matte seal it, okay, and then, um, and the next time I come back, I'll put the gloss varnish on, and you can see how the difference that makes between the anti shine and the gloss varnish on the shiny parts. All right, so I will see you in a bit. All right, we're back, and the um, you can see the texture has been dry washed or <laughs> dry washed, dry brushed, um, and I've got the uh, base band painted purple to match the rest of the army, and she's looking pretty spiff. She's just about done. I'm going to go ahead and uh, spray her down with the Army Painter Anti Shine now. And then uh, we'll put the gloss coat on the stuff that needs to be shiny and uh, glue the tufts on, and she'll be done. So, yeah, not a whole lot of time. Uh, this is kind of the big difference between doing a single character versus doing a whole army it, or a whole unit is that uh, a single character. You probably only have about maybe three hours of actual brush to miniature time um, of actually putting the paint on the figure but uh, it takes I've got probably five hours five or six hours logged on this total um, because of the time spent in between uh, coats letting them dry uh, you let the base coats dry you let the shade washes dry um, all that kind of thing and um, whereas with a, a unit there's much more individual brush to miniature time but there's a lot less drying time in between because you can by the time you get to the last figure your first figure is ready to go so um, so yeah it, uh, it definitely a different animal painting one figure versus painting a dozen but uh, I think she came out looking pretty good. I like that fade on her hair. It was pretty came out better than I thought it would. I kind of wanted to have uh, red hair to show that she was a, a leader, but at the same time I wanted that kind of bluish black that the, uh, the others had. So I just kind of faded out to purple and then to um, 
corn red. Let me put a little bit of a red accent on the end of that just to give it a little interest in there. But um, yeah, so that's that's that. Like I said, we're gonna go ahead and hit it with the anti-shine, and then um, glue the tufts and glue the tuft and the rock on, and we're good to go. So be right back. All right, we're back, and the infernal and rapturous has been matte sealed and as you can see all the shine on the jewels the blood all that is just gone so we're gonna take the uh, gloss coat now we're gonna aim the camera down at the workspace like that there we go and I'm just using a Citadel base brush so it's a small base brush doesn't have to be a really fine fine detail brush because we're going on it kind of thick and we're just painting it back over all those spots that we want to be glossy so all these little harp strings the blood on the guy's back bloody emblem on the back of the guy's back we'll get to that here in a minute and this doesn't have to be terribly neat the idea is just make it shiny again the other option for things especially like blood effects is to wait until you've got the entire figure painted and then paint the blood effects on after and that's a perfectly viable way of going about it too Doesn't have to go on real thick, so just a little bit of a little bit of gloss. And if you mess up, if you get outside the lines or anything, that's not a huge deal. Just use your little sponge soaked in water, neaten it up. There you go. That's all it takes. up the eyes there we go go ahead and paint it over the gold here too And so, yeah, there we go. Just gloss that up a little bit. There's that. And now the emblem of the back. And there you go. So that's all glossed up now. And we'll let that dry while we're putting the tufts on. I'm not going to do a whole lot of tufts on this one. Again, the base is kind of small, so it's going to be a little crowded if I go too far out with them. Put too many on. So just 
I think a little drop of super glue on this one right back here behind the guy. Be a, a rock right here. Just like that. And I've got the rock already picked out. Boom rock. Awesome. Oh, that's a nice bright one too. Get out our tufts. And uh, this one I was thinking instead of the usual white flowers that I've been putting on all the rest of them, I'm going to put a yellow, little tuft of yellow flowers on her base just to contrast that purple gown again. There we go. Now her yellow skin and the yellow flowers contrast the purple gown and his purple loincloth. There's a lot of purple on there. So there you go. And she is done. We'll put the glue away here. There you go. There is our Infernal and Rapturous. The uh, special character for the the Slanesh side of the Realm of Chaos, Wrath, and Rapture box set. And that wraps it up for the Slanesh side of things. Um, now we will move on to the corn side of things. And next week we're going to start out with the unit of... Uh, we're probably going to do this in the same order I did it with the Slanesh side. Start out with the 10 man unit, then the 5 man unit, then the 3 man unit, and then the special character. Um, so, next week is going to be the Blood Letters. Um, yeah, Blood Letters. And then the Flesh Hounds, the Juggernauts or Hunters, and then Karnak being the last one. Although, there again, I may change it up a little bit just because Karnak is. Well, Karnak's a special character, he's also a flesh hound. He's a three headed flesh hound. So I may change that up and paint him with the flesh hounds. Or at least the following week, because so, he uses the same. Hey, Brush Monkeys. Uh, Tom from Flying Monkey Studios here. If you like what you see, click like. If you uh, want to find out when uh, new videos get posted, click subscribe. Comment below on what you want to see on future videos. Visit our Patreon site for uh, lots of ways that you can support me in doing what I do. You can also visit our Instagram and Facebook pages to see all the miniatures that I paint on this channel and see how you can get your hands on one of your own. Uh, so thanks a lot for your time and thanks for watching my videos and I will see you guys later. Bye.